The Man in the Iron Mask. Already we have heard of the amazing significance in Europe of the man in the iron mask. In fact, nobody ever knew his name, yet many were prepared to put forward theories as to his identity. The man in the iron mask lived and died in the 18th century. And in this 20th century, one beautiful summer's morning, Michael and Louise Dent, honeymooning on their yacht off the coast of France, suddenly come upon the island where the man in the iron mask had been imprisoned. During their inspection of the fortress, Michael has been accidentally locked in the rooms of the man in the iron mask. He does not reply when his wife calls from the other side of the door. Why don't you answer? Michael! Michael! Monsieur! What is the matter in there? Oh, something's happened in the room. I never wanted to come near this hateful place, but Michael insisted. Oh, quickly, monsieur, you must open the door. But it is locked, madame. But surely there's another key. Michael! Michael! There is a key downstairs. I will go and get it at once, madame. You will come too. No, no, I'm staying here, but hurry, please, hurry, monsieur. Oh, goodness knows what happened inside there. Oh, Michael, why don't you answer? What's happened to you? Hurrying down the stairs, the old caretaker took some time to find the duplicate key of the prison rooms of the man in the iron mask. But eventually he was back again with this second key on a great ring. Louise, white-faced, tight-lipped, stood aside quickly as he pushed the great key into the lock. I... I feel almost afraid now. Almost afraid to walk inside there. Enter, madame. Michael! Michael! The room. It is empty. Then he must be in the other room. Heavens, this room is empty too. Oh, my dear. But surely he couldn't have... Oh, no, not through the window. A terrible drop to the sea below. It would be impossible for him to climb through the windows, madame. Look at the iron bars. But there's no other way out. Monsieur Nikos, there's no other way out. He must be here. But he is not, madame. It brings fear to my heart. Remember I told you that I've been strange tales of these rooms and the man in the iron mask. Oh, don't talk like that. He must be here somewhere. Perhaps he's behind this writing desk. He could hardly hide behind that, madame. Let us leave this room, madame. He is not here. But there must be some other way out. Perhaps a secret door, a secret panel. Madame, did I not tell you that when the man in the iron mask died, all the walls of these rooms were washed, all his personal belongings burned, and even his flagstones were taken up and examined underneath? There is no other exit from this room. But that's absurd. He couldn't just disappear. Madame, are you quite sure that he was inside the room when the door automatically locked? As you know, the passage was dim. The candles were blown out at the top of the stairs. Perhaps he was outside all the time. Yes, that seems to be the only explanation, monsieur. Either that or else I'm going crazy. And yet I'm sure I saw him on the other side of the door before it closed. Oh, dear heaven, my head is going round and round. I don't know what I saw now. I don't know what I'm saying. Monsieur, we've got to find him. We must search the fortress through and through. You've got to help me. I must find my husband. So the search began. Every room, every passageway, the battlements and turrets, and finally the dungeons underneath, oozing with slime. Nicholas had a plan of the fortress, and the job was done methodically. But there was no sign of Michael Dent. Now the sun was sinking, and a quick darkness was spreading across the sky and over the island itself, turning the lush green and the brown rocks into sinister and menacing shadows. And finally a great fire was lit on the beach, and by this fire Louise sat waiting, hoping against hope that her husband would see its brightness and come to her. And all this time her thoughts flew to the two rooms in the fortress and the fact that they belonged to the man in the iron mask. This strange person who lived in his seclusion in the middle of the 18th century. Towards three in the morning, there was a movement in the darkness, and Louise sprang to her feet. But soon the leaping flames of the fire showed the face of Monsieur Nicolas. Louise hurried towards him. You have news, Monsieur? I am sorry, Madame. There is no news. But my wife, oh. she insists that you come to our quarters. There is coffee waiting for you. 
Oh, thank you, monsieur. You're very kind. Take my arm, madame. Although I have a lantern, it is dark and the path is very rough. Madame, I have been talking with my wife. She has decided that she will not stay here any longer. Tonight, it is a finish. She was frightened before? Very frightened. As I told you earlier in the day, she believes that the rooms of the man in the iron mask are haunted. She firmly believes that he revisits the scenes of his torment. Oh! Just a moment. Keep still. Keep perfectly still. What's the matter? In the undergrowth there. I heard the snapping of a twig. Just a moment while I raise my lantern. Are you there, Louis? Michael! Monsieur Tin! Oh, Michael! Michael, where have you been? Oh, darling, what happened to you? I've been nearly out of my mind with worry. When did you disappear? To oh. We have been searching, searching frantically. Oh, I didn't realize it was so late. Oh, the time has gone so quickly, and I was so absorbed in... Uh, in... In what? I... Never mind. Oh, darling, when I looked at the time and I discovered how late it was... But where have you been? What does this all mean, Michael? I'll tell you later. Not now. Not now? But why are you being so mysterious? Darling, don't you understand? I've been almost frantic. The old island has been beside itself, monsieur. Oh, but this is wonderful news. I must hurry and tell my wife. Bring him with you, madame. The coffee, I promise. Perhaps we will learn more then. Darling, what is all this? I don't want to say anything in front of that Frenchman, but I have discovered something, Louise. Something that might rock France from border to border. But what is it? Shh. Let's have our coffee. Then I'll take you to the rooms of the man in the iron mask. Michael Dent's silence over coffee made the old caretaker's wife more nervous than she had been before. She was convinced that this man had had some visitation from the past and was frightened to speak of it. And later, when Captain Pauling had been given no explanation either, he too had his reactions, but they were reactions of anger. He felt that Michael Dent had been playing some practical joke. But later, much later, with the first light of dawn, when everybody was asleep, Michael roused his wife, and together they climbed the stone steps of the fortress and into its cavern-like interior, and to the suite of the man in the iron mask. Louise gave a frightened gasp as he walked inside and locked the door. There's no need to worry, darling. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing other supernatural is it what you're thinking. The door is locked. We will be uninterrupted. As you know, Louise, I was so interested in that lock because it was like one of our modern ones. The automatic fixtures and the workmanship. And then I noticed on this side of the door, this ornamentation in the shape of a bull. See, this side of the lock, just where you push the key. Oh, yes, Michael. Well, then I happened to look above the door. There. Just above the middle of the door, on the wall, see? The freeze to match. Yes. More ornamentation in the shape of bulls. But that one above the door is different somehow. It's made of the same metal as this lock, the same color. That is why I pulled up a chair. Why I got on the chair so I could examine it more closely. And then the wonderful thing happened. I placed my hand on the metal. There seemed to be some kind of movement and... Look! Good heavens, Michael, it moved! Yes, a secret door, Louise. And of all places, above the original door. Who would ever think of finding a door above a door? Oh, this is extraordinary. Do you blame me when I scrambled up there? I was so excited I had no thought of anything else. But didn't you hear me call? No, but I thought you had gone for the key. When I climbed up inside into that room up above, the panel shut and I couldn't open it again. I waited for you to come into the room but heard nothing, so I started exploring. I couldn't get in because the key was inside. Yes, I discovered that later. Anyhow, my discovery. What did you find up there? Better come up and see for yourself, my dear. Then you'll understand why I've said nothing. Here, let me help you. Yes. This table is much higher than the chair, if you can manage that with my help. Yes, Michael. Oh, it's all so odd. The rooms of the man in the iron mask. But surely he didn't use this room, too. And if he did, to what purpose? You'll see. Now stay up there, my dear. I can manage quite easily. Why, what a strangely furnished room. 
Furnished as all rooms were furnished in 1760 or thereabouts. 1760? Something like that. This desk. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, yes. I wiped the thick dust away there, but the rest, as you can see, is covered in grime, half an inch thick. Michael, what's that? I was waiting for you to see it. Oh, how hideous. Oh, what a horrible face. Do you know what it is? The mask. The iron mask. Yes, darling. It's your privilege and mine to look at something that hasn't been seen for nearly 300 years. Michael. This dreadful instrument which locked a man away from the world. And here by this instrument is the secret which all French men have been seeking. The life story of the man in the iron mask. Who he was, what he did, and why he was imprisoned here in this fortress. Oh, Michael. Sit down, darling. Now you'll understand why I forgot where I was, what was happening... Why, I forgot time and place and even my lovely wife. Sit and listen while I read an amazing story from this faded diary. The secret of the man in the iron mask. So Michael and Louise Dent have stumbled across an amazing secret in this extraordinary room. At their feet is the hideous, grinning contraption known as the Iron Mask. And now in Michael's hands is a faded book with even more faded writing. The Secret of the Man in the Iron Mask.